We are at our uh, published time, which is uh, 6 p.m. I'm Sean Fielder. I'm the town manager for the town of Hardwick. I am taking part of the meeting this evening from the uh, Hardwick Police Department location. We do have uh, uh, Chief Cochran and a number of our other officers who are joining us at this time. And in the next few minutes, the chief will um, give an opening statement and then also uh, the officers would be introducing themselves. Um, just a friendly reminder, if you would, please uh, go ahead and mute uh, yourself um, if you're not one who is speaking. We do have um, some commentary to start the meeting and then there will be an opportunity for uh, questions and answers. Um, I wanna say thank you to uh, Hardwick Community Television. Uh, Leaf is here with, uh, involved with the meeting and what we are uh, gonna do is record the event and we'll have it available, assuming the technology works, we'll have it available in the future uh, as a viewable item on Hardwick Community Television's website. Uh, thank you to our uh, uh, chief who is coordinated with um, Gary uh, Sarcosta, who is here. Gary, uh, thank you. I'll have you just offer a statement here in a few minutes. Gary's on the select board, town of Greensboro. Uh, for uh, I think the green, well, in case you're not aware, I'll just say this, um, you know, Hardwick uh, Police Department uh, also has a contract for service uh, to provide uh, public safety services to the town of Greensboro as well. And, um, uh, uh, thanks uh, to anybody from Greensboro and or Hardwick who are, is taking part tonight. You know, the uh, objective for the meeting this evening is uh, on at a basic level, um, introduce um, our department and the officers. And then, uh, you know, as is listed in the title of the event, have a conversation with the police department on issues of the day. Um, we also have uh, Doug McClure joining us from the Gazette. So Doug, thanks for your interest. Appreciate you being involved. Um, I'm anticipating we may have a little bit of press coverage on the event, um, and uh, this is a good thing. Um, uh, just, uh, I, I think all of us are aware that we're at a, a pretty unique and uh, I guess you could say a pretty volatile time in our country's history. We've got, we're in the middle of a pandemic, and then also we've got some pretty significant social issues that we're dealing with nationally. And the objective with the meeting uh, tonight, uh, and it's not just a one one off, but the objective is just to make sure that uh, folks in our area have a good understanding and uh, get a little bit of an introduction. And you know, if you don't know our officers and how it is we go about policing for Hardwick and Greensboro and providing support to other areas, it's important that you you get this information. And, and um, uh, just a little bit of an aside, uh, you know, I've been in the town manager's role since January of 2019 for the town of Hardwick. And uh, my personal experience is that the officers that we have in our department are dedicated. Uh, they really are doing their best to be good stewards. And at the same time, uh, I think everybody is aware they're doing a pretty demanding job that um, it, it's a lot of different things that they are involved with. So uh, enough about you know me just taking it back to what spurred this is basically some of the things that are occurring around us at a pretty volatile time in our country's history. And uh, Gary from uh, Greensboro Select Board, I already mentioned Gary. Uh, Gary, if you wanna just uh, uh, offer up anything, I know uh, uh, before you say anything, Greensboro Select Board reached out to us and um, uh, you know, the community members there and say, look, we want to just make sure we're, we're understanding what it is you're all doing there for services. So, uh, Gary, do you want to add anything, uh, you know, to what I've noted for an introduction here? I think you did a pretty, uh, a pretty amazing job. I just like to thank um, both Chief Cochran and, and you, Sean, for your willingness to uh, set up the meeting in response to the community's requests. I hope everyone gets what they need from the meeting and thank you all for participating. Okay, Gary, thank you. Um, I know Bobby Nesbitt had some involvement on this. Uh, Peter Romans, uh, select board also uh, Greensboro had some involvement. Um, what we'll do here, folks, is, uh, you know, we're published up until about seven o'clock. If we go a little bit beyond, uh, that's fine. Um, we got to be sensitive to everybody's schedules here, but we want to make sure folks' questions are answered. Um, what I will do is uh, I'm going to kind of act as the moderator. I'm going to be turning it over to Chief Cochran and the officers. And then, uh, you know, he's got some information he'll lead in with. Uh, just a reminder from our, uh, from our announcement, what does HB uh, Hardwick Police Department see as their role in the community? What do they see as their strengths? Uh, where is the department stretched or feel uh, expectations placed upon them are not realistic? 
you know, these are some of the things that we're going to be uh, doing our best to address this evening. For the agenda, I've already talked about Chief Cochran is going to lead in. We'll have the police department members who are uh, able to take part this evening uh, introduce himself, uh, themselves, talk a little bit about their roles. And then we'll have the, the time for questions and answers. Uh, sorry, we got an active department, so you can hear a phone ringing in the background. We've got to keep that line open. Uh, and then we'll have some closing comments from Chief Cochran. Um, with this being said, uh, Chief, and to the officers, thank you for your willingness to be involved this evening. Uh, it is appreciated very much, and I'll go ahead and turn it over to Chief Cochran. Thanks, Sean. Um, again, uh, welcome, everybody who uh, uh, can make it tonight. Hopefully, you'll bear with us. This is a new format, uh, somewhat for us in this type of meeting, um, so we'll do our best um, to uh, fight through any technical difficulties that may come up. Um, thanks to Bobby uh, Nisbet, who, uh, um, you know, brought this suggestion to the uh, select board. <clears throat> As I mentioned to the Hardwick select board uh, at our last meeting, uh, <clears throat> the Vermont Chiefs of Police have actually um, suggested this type of a meeting <clears throat> uh, to happen uh, going forward for all departments. And <clears throat> as far as I know, um, since this was just recommended, we are probably one of the first uh, to actually attempt this. Uh, so um, we try to be on the forefront of uh, what's happening and what's happening in policing. Um, and we continue to, to research and, and try to do our best uh, to, to provide best services to the uh, both communities. Um, with us tonight, um, we have uh, Sergeant Darren Barber. Um, we have uh, Detective Corporal Kevin Leho. Um, we have Officer Katie Semino, um, Officer Lucas Marcou, and I think we have Corporal Stephen Mitchell. He was going to try to call in uh, from his house. Um, he's not on duty tonight. We do have um, missing this evening um, is uh, Scott Gagnon who is our uh, dispatcher and uh, a part-time police officer as well. Um, Chad Stacy, uh, who is a part-time police officer uh, for us. Um, Donald Janesse, who we recently just hired to fill a uh, vacant position. And Officer RJ Caldwell. And it's RJ's birthday, so we'll say happy birthday to RJ. And uh, he has the, the night off tonight. Um, I guess I'll start off. Our, our plan is to, uh, we have some questions that were, were sent in. Um, my plan is to uh, discuss uh, a little bit about each of us, um, and then we will um, go over the questions that we have uh, sent in to us, and then we'll open it up for, for, for open questions. Um, so first, a little bit about myself. Um, I actually started uh, in the Hardwick Police Department in 2003. Um, I left here in 2006 and worked for the Morristown Police Department uh, for several years. Uh, I came back in 2011 as a sergeant. I was in March of 2011 and I took over as acting chief in uh, August of 2011 of the same year. Uh, and was offered the full position in February of 2012. Um, so I have been, this is my 18th year in law enforcement. Uh, I've been uh, chief here for uh, about 10 years, uh, um, uh, somewhat local. Uh, my family uh, raised, uh, uh, have lived in Walden for generations. Uh, I'm a generational Vermonter. Uh, dating back to uh, actually the Civil War. So um, the um, I have uh, two teenage daughters uh, and a wife. Um, I live in this community. I pay taxes in this community. So um, what happens here is uh, just as important to me as it is to most people. So um, I have a somewhat of a vested interest in this community, I guess you, you could put it. Um, so um, I guess after that, I'm going to um, put it off to um, Sergeant Barber. 
and uh, let him introduce himself. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Hi, my name is Darren Barber. I'm a sergeant with the Harvard Police Department. I've been in law enforcement for 28 years. Um, all of those years, I've been a resident of either the town of Hardwick or the town of East Hardwick. Um, both my daughters graduated from Hazen Union. Um, I've coached at Hazen Union basketball. I've also coached at the Hardwick Elementary School. Um, so I am very invested into our community. Um, my law enforcement experience, I started here uh, back in 92 uh, at the Hardwick Police Department for eight years. I went to the Lamoille County Sheriff's Department for 10 years, five of those as a detective. And then I did five years at the uh, Attorney General's office as a detective. I did five years as an investigator with Adult Protective Services. And then I have come back here to finish out my career with the Harvard Police Department. Uh, as I stated, I'm married. I have two grown adult children that are out on their own. Um, and uh, I enjoy working for the Hardwick Police Department. Um, in my entire career, it's rare to come across such a group of individuals that are as dedicated and concerned about the well being of their community. Thank you. Uh, uh, Detective Lee, how are you there? Chief, I know him. Yes. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Kevin. As long as everyone can hear me. Um, my name is uh, Kevin Leho, and I'm a detective with the Hardwick Police Department. And uh, <clears throat> I live uh, local in the area, and I've been with HPD for 10 years. Uh, my family and, uh, and I, you know, love the community, love the area. Um, like Sergeant Barber, I've, I've coached in the area. Um, coached uh, against Hayes and Union. So I'm very familiar, you know, outside of police work, just in general familiar with the, you know, a lot of the people around here. Um, three kids. Uh, my oldest is a cadet at Norwich and then I have two at the local schools. Um, my background for law enforcement is I started with HPD 10 years ago and I've been a um, detective for the last eight years. Um, starting two years into my employment, I was uh, put in a position by Chief Cochran to work with the Caledonia Special Investigation Unit, uh, which primarily focused on crimes against children, uh, crimes that were sexual in nature, elderly abuse. And so I dedicated a, a fair amount of my time uh, with that unit, as there's only three detectives in Caledonia County who handle those types of crimes. Um, once I knew who I was. Over those, uh, those uh, years, I also took on as a primary uh, detective here in the department. And then for those two years, uh, these past two years, I've been a uh, generally a plainclothes uh, detective handling uh, any of the investigations that revolve around um, burglaries, narcotics, anything that um, uh, takes additional um, investigation time away from so it allows the patrol officers to be able to be out on the road and a lot of that extra investigatory work is is left with me so that would uh, just about sum it up for me just real quick um i want to just tell everybody what i've done is i've muted everybody because we are getting some background background chatter so just be advised of that so uh, again we're just working through the technical issues here uh, chief go ahead and introduce the next officer that officer may have to unmute themselves sure um uh, Officer Samino, can you uh, can you hear me? I'm not sure if they stepped out or not. Hey, Sean, if somebody's on the phone, they might not know how to unmute. Is there how do you, you know how to do that? I dare say it's star six, but honestly, I may need to research that really quick, Lucian. Okay, I guess I guess both uh, Officer Semino and Officer Marcou have, have had to go out on a call. So, um, hope if they get back in before we're done, uh, we'll we can uh, kind of skip in with them. Um, 
and I don't see that Corporal Mitchell is on. I don't see him on here. So um, that's three of us. And, and as, uh, <clears throat> as Sean said, we're an active department, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And so that's what happens is uh, we get calls and, um, you know, have to go to, to answer those calls. Um, <clears throat> a little background of the department uh, was uh, we actually, as as uh, Detective Leho was saying, we actually added a, I, I chose to, uh, I, I looked into the need, I guess, really, to add a, a uh, plainclothes detective. And it was very obvious. It had been done by the majority of the departments around the area. Actually, all of the departments around the area, with the exception of us, had already made that move. And we looked at our call volume. Uh, which was extreme and an officer, an additional officer had not been added uh, to the department since the 1990s. Um, so uh, we actually applied for and received a uh, COPS grant, which uh, paid for a large portion of the funding of that officer for the, the first three years, uh, which allowed us to keep uh, six patrol officers and move um, Detective Leo uh, into a full-time detective position. Um, that has allowed us to do uh, many drug investigations, which have been very complex. Um, anybody who is not familiar with the nature of uh, narcotics investigations, they are very lengthy. Um, and um, the, we in September, we actually did a, a roundup um, of several arrests. Uh, they were all drug-related arrests, and a lot of that information uh, was a, a year or more in the making uh, to get to that point in September. Um, so when when somebody says that they're uh, calling the police department uh, about drug information and nothing is being done, um, I'm here to tell you now there's probably further from the truth. Um, there is always something being done. Um, but it also depends on what we're able to do. And again, they're very lengthy investigations. So um, it's not true that nothing gets done. Uh, it may appear that way initially, um, but if we told everybody what we were doing every minute of the day, we'd have a much higher crime rate and a much more of a drug problem than what we have today. Um, so the nature of our job is to uh, gather intelligence um, and uh, act on that intelligence. And that's what we do. So um, there were a few. Um, before I go, did anybody have any questions for um, about our background for either myself, Detective, I mean, uh, Detective Lee Hill or Sergeant Barber? For anybody on video, if you are having trouble unmuting yourself, you can raise your hand at this point if you have a question. Uh, assuming I can see you, I could unmute you. I think you have that capability if you're on a computer. I'm sorry, I'm trying. I'm trying to track down how to do that if you're on a phone. Uh, but again, if you have anything at this point, you want to raise your hand, I can make sure you get your question in there. Star six should be correct, Sean. Okay, thank you, Leaf. So uh, if you are taking part via phone and you want to ensure that you are heard, it would be star six on your phone. That would unmute your phone. Okay, Chief, go ahead. I'm not seeing any hands. Okay, um, some, some questions that were sent in um, that we had um, is we had, uh, uh, let me get to this email here. Um, one of the questions was to explain uh, the process of how policies are made uh, and who writes them. Um, it really depends on the policy itself. Uh, the majority of the policies, policies that we have adopted uh, come from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, um, and their policies are written by uh, Jack Ryan, who is a uh, retired captain uh, from Rhode Island State Police. Uh, he um, is also a well-known uh, police expert who has testified across the country uh, in police uh, lawsuits. Um, so he writes uh, policy for the uh, for the league, uh, which then gets put out to uh, police departments. Uh, at that point, it is up to the uh, police department, the chief, as to whether or not the policy is adopted. 
as to whether or not there are changes to that policy. Um, although most changes are not recommended because it has been vetted um, quite strictly by an attorney uh, at that point in time. Um, but that's how, how they come through. So the majority of our policies come from the league. Um, there is an exception and that is the, um, the uh, fair and impartial um, policing policy. That one actually came from uh, the Vermont Criminal Justice Training Council. And that was done, that policy was done, was written through a committee um, of human rights groups, uh, police chiefs, uh, state police, uh, the attorney general's office. And so we chose to uh, go, go with that policy uh, for the vetting process and, to, and how it was, was handled. And it was, it was vetted through the uh, Vermont attorney general's office. They had input on that particular policy. Um, and they actually have on file at the attorney general's office, uh, every police department in the state's fair and impartial policing uh, policy. That, that is actually a uh, mandated policy by legislature. Um, legislature does mandate certain policies. That's one of them. Um, and uh, it's also mandated to, to be on file. Um, our other policies uh, come, uh, come from the league. Uh, with the exception of maybe our uniform policy, and that is written by generally us um, as to what the color of the uniform is, et cetera, et cetera, which may be a uh, rather boring policy, um, but we do, uh, we call it a uniform to try and be uniform, um, and that, that uh, is how we, we try to go. Uh, we have evolved. Um, on some policies, when I first took over, um, the policy, the majority of the policies uh, were written in the 1980s. Uh, very few had been updated. Uh, I took on the task of working with the league and updating all of the policies. Many of them have been through uh, multiple changes over the last 10 years as um, some change happens in our environment, um, something gets changed and and at least looked at um, so that's that's kind of how new policies are handled when we receive them how we receive them and who writes them um, as i said we don't make generally many changes except to add our name in uh, to the policy uh, we feel that uh, they're written vermont specific uh, they take into account vermont law and uh, they are written by not only a police expert, uh, but an attorney as well for the league. So um, generally we feel they are uh, written for us and for us to go in and make many changes, uh, it's recommended if many changes are made uh, that we again go back and have it looked at uh, by an attorney to see if the changes uh, that we made uh, are legal. So uh, we, generally know it's legal when it comes to us and uh, the league recommends it and that's what we what we go with. Um, there was a question about whether there's a, a citizen advisory board to review the policies. Um, I think I kind of answered that. There is not a citizen review board um, for uh, the majority of the policies with the exception was the uh, fair and impartial policing one that actually there was a, a some, some, I believe, some citizens on that particular board um, that worked on, on that policy. Here, um, policies, again, um, I, I explained how they're written, why they're written, and uh, that, that works uh, quite well there. So, um, and another one was about whether we'd made changes. I believe I've, I've answered that. Um, Bobby, if you're on there, if I didn't answer anything, you're, you're welcome to, to ask. Um, but uh, those, are, those are some of the questions that I had there. Um, some other questions that I answered um, at the Hardwick Select Board meeting. Um, uh, there was a question about whether um, no-knock warrants could be obtained in Vermont. Um, I'm hearing some feedback, but I'm not sure if that's a question or. No, go ahead, Chief. Somebody just came in and I had to mute them, but go ahead, Chief. Okay. Um, 
there was a question of whether or not no knock warrants can be obtained in Vermont. Um, they can be obtained. Um, it's not common. I've never seen one in my career, but it's generally, if they're obtained, it's, it's for safety and preservation of evidence uh, would be the reason as to why a no knock warrant would be obtained. And what that is, is, is essentially when a, when a warrant is executed, uh, we are required to uh, knock on the door and announce ourselves as to who we are and, and that we have a warrant. Uh, no knock warrant would uh, give us the opportunity to enter building, residence, et cetera, uh, without having to knock and announce. Uh, and again, I haven't ever been involved in one myself. Um, there was a question about how officers are, are held accountable. Um, and again, that was, uh, legislature took that on. Um, and some of the, the ways that that is, is, is uh, if an officer is, is let go from an agency uh, now, uh, that is reported to the uh, Vermont Criminal Tr Justice Training Council. Um, they also are an invest. They also are an investigative um, agency for uh, complaints which uh, may go to a to a criminal complaint. Uh, if an officer was um, accused of any type of criminal activity, uh, then uh, the training council uh, has a say in what happens to that officer. Um, I'm just reading through here some of the questions that, that we had. Uh, there was a question about if the use of force policy has been updated. And as I said before, that's one of the policies that has been updated multiple times over the last 10 years. Um, our last update was just a week or two ago, uh, for the newest update for the use of force policy. Um, There was a question as to whether or not we felt that police were spread too thin uh, in this state, in this community, and across the country. Um, and my simple answer to that would be yes. Um, we have been tasked with um, putting on the hat uh, for mental health issues, um, being parents, uh, being pastors, um, social workers, and, and it seems like when a new job comes up that um, they can't really task somebody else with. Uh, law enforcement is getting tasked with that. Um, and, and that is uh, one of the problems that I see in this country, in this state, uh, with law enforcement in general, is we're being tasked with a lot and not enough time to uh, really be able to deal with each individual problem sometimes the way it should be. Um, there was a question. Um, uh, there was a question on a use of force policy of whether or not it allows for uh, what was stated as a neon neck move. Um, which was um, referenced in the um, killing of, of uh, George Floyd. Uh, there is no such move in Vermont that is uh, taught like that. Uh, we don't do neck holds uh, of any type, but like anything like what was, what was uh, seen in that particular video. Um, so there's nothing in a policy that allows for anything like that. Um, that's, that's, we're not trained in that manner in, in the state of Vermont. Um, another question was uh, at this time was, what do you think we could do to make sure that the extrajudicial killing of George Floyd and so many others never happens here? Um, simply to continue training uh, Vermont. I feel Vermont is very, uh, up to date in their training, um, takes human rights very much into account. Uh, it's, it's very much on the forefront. And um, I think we should uh, continue training uh, the way that we do. Um, and when more modern uh, training standards come out, we, we 
review those and we move forward with with uh, those trainings and um, as new information comes out we progress as an agency we uh, progress as a as a uh, group of law enforcement you know in this state so I'm very proud of uh, the men and women that work for me uh, they're very dedicated individuals um, and they train very hard and they get up in the morning um, or evening depending on their shift uh, put on their boots just like everybody else does um, I'd say they drink coffee like everybody else does but some like it black some like it with cream etc um, so but they uh, uh, they're people uh, just like everybody else and they come to work uh, not hoping to have to injure or, or hurt anybody um, that's not their job their job is to uh, preserve the peace, and that's what we try our best to do. I guess, Sean, if you have any questions, if anybody has any questions at this point, that's what I had received for questions, and I don't know if I answered. I just want to make sure Bobby had sent some in. I just want to make sure I answered hers. Yeah, Chief, um, I had a little technical issue with my internet connection. I don't know if you had an opportunity uh, uh, Katie's back on and I believe uh, Lucas if you want to uh, sorry I'm giving first names here if you want to have them if you didn't do this yet if you want to have them introduce themselves I believe they're on now sure Katie are you on yes chief you want me to introduce myself yeah go ahead okay uh, my name is officer Semino I just started about a month ago um, I enjoy working here and I'm on the FTO process, which is field training with my FTO, uh, Lucas. Katie, maybe you could give a little background on uh, how you've gotten here and maybe your education just a little bit more. You're uh, just what you're also a service member. You want to just give a little bit more for folks. I think that would be valuable. Sure. Um, so I started my military career with the 143rd Military Police in Connecticut. I got my bachelor's in emergency management, Homeland Security. I moved up to Vermont about two years ago. I'm now with the 172nd Law Enforcement Detachment in Williston, Vermont, and I'm getting my master's in criminal justice. I have two classes left. Thanks, Katie. Officer Mark, go on. There you go. Yeah, you're good. I can hear you. I can see you now, Luke. Lucas, you're good. Can you hear me? Yes. I can only see you. I don't really know how this works, but my name is Lucas Marcoux. Uh, I've got about seven years in law enforcement. Um, I started at Stowe PD, did some time there, and I went to the Lamont County Sheriff's Department, did about four years there, and then came up here. Uh, currently, the field training officer uh, domestic violence instructor, taser instructor. And um, uh, so we're, I'm, I'm working on field training Katie right now, going through that process. It seems to be going pretty well. Uh, really enjoy it up here in Hardwick. It's, it's a great place to work. Um, great department that you guys have here. Okay. Um... I think, uh, you know, we've got a little bit of time here, of course, we're about 35 minutes in and, um, um, you know, Aaron, a question for me now, if you address this in a couple of minutes that I was offline, forgive me, but um, I know one of the things you talked about at the Hardwick uh, select board meeting where you know, we were talking about some similar issues. Um, I think it would be uh, nice for folks to hear about just generally your strategies working when you're out in the field. This isn't just directed at the chief, of course, but um, you know, the, the fact of the matter is uh, it's a rural department. We are servicing a rural area. And when you are um, out on a call, um, oftentimes uh, because you're, you know, it may be a single officer responding, you really have to be uh, de-escalating and uh, you know doing your best to uh, calm down the situation, if I could put it that way. And maybe you could offer a little bit about this because I think it's a really an as uh, important aspect of the operations for the department for both our communities. Sure, um, Sean. One of the misconceptions that I've heard over the over the years is 
we have six patrol officers, uh, one detective, a chief, uh, and a couple part-time officers. And one of the misconceptions that I've heard from people is that we have all of these officers. Um, they don't understand that we are here seven days a week, 24 hours a day, uh, which leaves uh, one officer per shift. We run three shifts a day. Um, so you, you don't have uh, 10 officers working um, all day long every day. It's, it's again, it's one officer per shift with three shifts a day. Uh, we're covering 76 square miles, uh, two towns and two counties. Um, so that's a big area. Uh, we don't have, we're, we're kind of an island, uh, we're referred to. Uh, we're, we're, we are the, at the end of everything. We're at the end of Caledonia County. Um, we're at the end of Orleans County. Um, and we're at the end of uh, Lamoille County as well. So as far as backup from other officers, um, we don't have much. We, uh, Vermont State Police is, is uh, obviously uh, stationed out of St. Johnsbury, even though this would be within their coverage area because it is Caledonia County. Um, but they uh, don't often come, you know, this way. They're, they're tasked um, and busy on the, on the other end of Caledonia County quite often. Uh, if we have backup, it's generally from uh, Lamoille County Sheriff's or uh, the Morristown Police Department um, has come to uh, back us up. In Greensboro, we really have no backup, generally. Uh, state police uh, generally are done at 2 o'clock in the morning, um, and so there's not much for backup there. We learn um, de-escalation tactics are very important uh, to stay alive and uh, to learn how to how to talk to people and, and that's uh, learning how to talk to somebody is not always easy um, but it's a very important uh, life-saving uh, task to learn in law enforcement especially in the rural area that we're in thank you chief um we okay so you guys see margaret who is raising her hand so uh margaret i think uh let me see if i can uh you should be able to unmute yourself i haven't um yeah there you hey, go Kat. margaret you're you're uh, live I, go ahead margaret i have a curiosity question do you have the ability to say no to an improper request uh it depends on the improper request i guess like I, I'm not sure what you're referring to. Well, I mean, some of these things seem to be um, more in the mental health uh, arena. Um, is there ever an occasion where you can say, I can't send one person out to deal with that? Uh, that's a bit of a difficult question. Um, just hi hypothetically, um, with, without a... Uh, I guess a more specific example there, there may be an instance there. Um, but generally, um, we go to help when we can, uh, we've helped, we help the rescue squad on calls. We help the fire department, uh, when they go out on calls. Yeah. We generally, um, even if it's mental health or whatever it is, um, it's in our nature to be, um, of some assistance of, of help. So, I guess if we feel we can can be of help, uh, we generally uh, will go and try to try to do. Keith, uh, this is Sean. One of the things I recall from the presentation to the Hardwick Select Board was your, you know, you indicating that the role of uh, a police officer has really significantly changed over this past, say, ten to fifteen year period. I might have my time frame wrong, but. I think it does get to the root of uh, Margaret's question, and that is, uh, I'll say this, and then you can add on what you think here. Um, it, it, the way I heard you say it was, you know, you're, you're wearing multiple hats these days as a police officer. So, uh, you know, you are having to be uh, uh, the, the social worker, no disrespect, that's really important work, but it, it, uh, you know, there's multiple hats that you have to wear in your roles as police officers. So it can uh, stretch you thin, if I can put it that way. If you want to offer anything on this, Chief, go ahead. No, that's exactly. We, you know, we we are stretched very thin, um, and uh, I don't see that changing any 
time soon. Um, uh, that's where I, you know, there, there are, have been um, across the country, there has, have been different movements of, of defunding the police. Um, defunding the police would certainly be a uh, detriment uh, to the communities that we serve um, because there are so many tasks that we are completing and, and there to help that um, uh, many don't realize, many don't understand or don't expect to see a police officer in that particular role, uh, but we're doing that. Okay, thanks, Chief. Um, I do have, uh, Janet, if you would hold on just for a second. I've got from the chat room, um, I've got a question that's from uh, Sherry Cornish, um, and here it is. There's, there has been a significant change in environment around uh, racial um, equality. Is uh, Vermont League of Cities and Towns recommending any policy changes around current events um, as tied to, uh, excuse me, racial equity, not equality, excuse me. So let me say this again, there's been significant change in environment around racial equity. Is the Vermont League of Cities and Towns recommending any policy changes around uh, basically tied to current events um, as it pertains to community policing? I paraphrase there a little bit, but I think you got the root of the question and directing that at Chief Cochran. Sure, I haven't seen anything uh, come through from the league for any more recent policy changes as far as recent events. Um, actually, uh, what we've seen has been from legislature and from the uh, uh, training council. And those are, that would be the, the uh, I think our, our policy, um, fair and impartial policing policy, uh, I think personally, I, I think is probably very up to date and was ahead of maybe some other states, some other cities, um, in how they're handling uh, situations. I think in Vermont, we, I would certainly like to think, and, and um, we have certainly had uh, less incidents, if any, um, and none such as the George, George Floyd incident. Um, and, and I think that it has to do with a lot of the, the training that is being provided. It's very updated training. Uh, the policies are very updated. Um, so we, um, you know, are trying to be ahead of the curve, so to speak, so that we're not, uh, in a situation, uh, such as that out there. Uh, we are a smaller state. Um, there is a lot less law enforcement here. There's a very strong vetting process, uh, for applicants here. So, um, so it's, it's, uh, hopefully we're ahead of the curve um, for, for what happened as far as Vermont goes. But I, I haven't seen any, anything come out recent um, from the league um, since, since that, that event. Just so, uh, so everybody is aware, the uh, Vermont League of Cities and Towns is the uh, organizational support next uh, mechanism for all the municipal entities in the state of Vermont. So uh, what that means is uh, they are in all issues providing uh, advice and guidance to uh, towns and cities all over the state of Vermont uh, in regards to everything uh, having to do with operations. And um, they, they do have a specialist uh, who is a retired former police chief uh, now leading up this effort with support from some other folks uh, in their department, uh, their offices out of Montpelier. They are regularly in the state house. They are regularly um, you know, trying their best to keep up with legislation. And also it's important to say this, ensure that uh, for municipalities and our departments, in this instance, the police department, that we are keeping up with the times, if I could put it that way. I don't know if you want to add anything else on this, Chief. No, I think that's, that's, you know, that's the case. If, if we were behind um, on policies, et cetera, then I would expect that the, the league would have uh, come out with, with uh, things. And, and, you know, always when, it, when an incident occurs, uh, that's a, a time that you need to review policy. Um, and, um, you know, the, the, the policy that we got from the league um, was it a new use of force policy, um, which identified what NAC holes were because it's not something that uh, we train for in Vermont. Um, so there, there, you know, did, it did identify what they are 
um, et cetera. Uh, that was in the, the use of force policy. Um, but as far as our fair and impartial uh, policing policy, that was, um, that was, uh, you know, I think pretty update, up to date and, and vetted by a lot of, um, by the AG's office as well as uh, the human rights, different human rights organizations. Okay, so I have, uh, I've got two questions that have come up. Um, I can kind of help to uh, just get these on the table. Uh, one's from Margaret Lipscomb, and it says, um, hold on, are the policies that have been spoken of published anywhere in the public domain? So, Chief, you could address that one. Can you say that again, Sean? I yeah. Are the policies that have been spoken of published anywhere in the public domain? They're not. Uh, we don't have at this point, um, again, prohibitive of a good website. If there's a great website designer out there that would like to help us design a, a department website, um, generally most towns do have a, a separate website for their police department. They do, don't generally um, include that in all of the town because it is a, a large organization. Usually it's separate from the town website. And uh, we don't have a great way to publish those policies. So um, at this point we don't, um, they're public records. So anybody can, you know, under public record law, come in and read through them if, if they would like to. It's, some of it is a little dry reading, but uh, they, are, they are here. Yeah, Chief, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, some of the things we're talking about, um, do link back to um, other uh, overarching organizations, if I'm not mistaken. So I think you'd reference, you know, oftentimes we're uh, maybe um, referencing a state police uh, uh, type item or just something that's been maybe vetted by the attorney general's office. Uh, you know, do you have, is, am I correct on saying this? As far as a policy, Sean? Well, I know internal, our policy is our town policies, but there's, I, I know you at the select board meeting and uh, at the Hardwick event, you know, there was one thing that had come up, forgive me, I've forgotten the detail, but you had said, you know, this is available as a clearinghouse item. Let me shift the comment. And one of the things we will be doing at our uh, town operations level is, you know, we don't have the information up, what we are allowed to put out there. We will be working on getting it out there. I want to make sure everybody involved with the presentation here. Um, you know, uh, hears from us that we want to be as transparent as policy on the, uh, as possible on these items. So that's the thing I would add right now. Anything else on that chief? No, I'm good. Okay. So, uh, hang on in the chat room, everybody. I'm uh, trying to, trying to uh, just keep the narratives going here and, uh, let me bear with me folks. So hold, if you're thinking about throwing a question in the chat room, just hold for a second. Um, I may have had one of these slip past me, but from Ann Stevens, uh, would you welcome involvement of social workers and mental health professionals? If so, uh, what could make that happen? So in regards to this type of work is the context I'm taking away here. Chief, you wanna go ahead and address that? Sure. Um, and some of, the, some of the, we are actually talking um, of expanding the, the mental health workers um, the uh, Caledonia State's Attorney is, is uh, working on that as well to expand uh, mental health workers uh, within the police departments. <clears throat> as of right now, there is an, what they call an embedded worker. Um, but unfortunately, again, we're at the end of um, the area. Uh, and generally, the majority of them are, are housed in the St. Johnsbury area. So, we're having to wait, you know, for them to get here. Uh, we tried uh, different things. We tried um, uh, telehealth, so to speak, um, to which we, we had um, a TV monitor here. Uh, we were able to call in, et cetera. Um, there's no perfect answer at this point uh, that I've been able to find. I've explored several different um, several different thoughts, I guess you'd call them. And, uh, with mental health, but um, right now, I it, I think it really comes down to um, you know financial and um, and the amount of jobs uh, that are out there. There's just not enough people right now to to do the jobs. Um, so we 
we're here. We were tasked with it. Uh, believe it or not, um, the uh, town garage used to have a, um, a wood-fired boiler, and uh, the police officers in Hardwick were uh, tasked with uh, filling that boiler at the town garage every, every night uh, during the winter time to keep the fires going uh, so that uh, nothing froze up in the town garage. So just an example of the many hats. Um, thankfully, we have progressed since then, and, and we're not having to fill the town garage furnace anymore, but uh, it's just a, just an example of uh, the many hats that, that get put on us that we really don't have a choice as to whether or not we're doing them. Okay, I got a question from uh, Doug McClure, uh, Chief Cochran. You mentioned a recent policy update in the past few weeks. What was that to address? Yeah, that was the updated policy of the, the response to resistance. And uh, one of Doug's uh, partners, uh, a reporter for the get, had actually emailed and asked for a copy of that, which I did email to them. Okay, I have a question from uh, Janet Long. I was surprised recently to learn that one of our black residents uh, at Spelling and Contacts was stopped and detained for quite a while because she was driving her mother's convertible and for no other reason. We might not be able to comment on this on a public setting. So, uh, Chief, if you are on call, you know, that's your call, how you want to respond to this one. Yeah, I, I, I won't comment out on any particular Case. I hope, I hope uh, Jane understands and others understand we can't necessarily um, comment on that particular situation. Let me, let me shift the, I'll shift the question though. I'll pivot the question. Um, you know, it, this gets to the issue of uh, unbiased policing. That's the subject matter on that particular question. So uh, how is it you are going about, uh, you know, doing your best to do an unbiased policing approach, Chief? Well, it's, as far as as far as traffic stop goes, um, you know, we're making traffic stops for violations. We're we're not stopping somebody because of uh, race, uh, gender, or anything like that. We we're doing traffic stops because there's a violation, and we um, you know are are working through whatever that violation may be. Okay, I got another question here, Chief, from uh, Stephanie uh, Crivetti. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. Chief Cochran, given the many hats you were asked to wear, I guess this isn't just to the Chief, but it's to all of our officers. Chief, if you want to start, uh, what kind of additional training are you receiving? Uh, we do receive some training um, on, on different items. Um, not always before we're tasked with doing it. Uh, sometimes it's been an afterthought. Um, some of the mental health stuff, um, we really didn't receive much for training um, for several years after um, I had actually been to the academy. Some of us had to go back to the academy uh, for um, uh, dealing with, with mental health issues. Um, and so sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Uh, and that can be very frustrating to us um, that we're you know, having to, <clears throat> to do some of these things more from personal experience. Okay, we, uh, Janet did post in the chat room, uh, Janet Long, um, you know, there was no violation uh, going back to that original question, but uh, Janet and others, I, I, I think Chief's noted, you know, we can't necessarily comment on this particular case. So uh, we're not gonna be able to do uh, anything more in regards to a response on that particular issue. We do have about five minutes to go on our posted time. I did not um, want a response on that particular item. You, you raised what I was talking about. Sure. The treatment of black people in okay. this area. And do you, I, do you always carry guns? Do we always carry guns? Yes. Absolutely. Well, do you need them for everything that you go for? I, I see the list in the card because that maybe you're not putting everything in there. Yeah, we we police officers wear wear firearms to protect yeah. themselves sure. and others in the community. Is there anything else, Janet? Okay. Okay, so um, 
we do, we've got about five minutes to go and um, I'm not seeing anything else in regards to the uh, chat room. Oh, I'm sorry. I see hand from uh, Bobby and Tim. Go ahead and you can unmute yourselves. Bobby, go ahead. Hi. There you go. Um, I'm Bobby from Greensboro and thanks Aaron and uh, Sean for putting this together and Gary from Greensboro. Um, what I wanted to have happen happened to have a general conversation to get to know who our police officers are, what your jobs are, and looking at policies and, and how those are made up and how they're put out. And there is anxiety in our country now, and I think we're in a safe state. I wanna hope that we stay in a safe, safe state, but there is anxiety out there so that I just want to put it out that we need, as citizens, need to have constant reassurance that uh, we're okay and we will be okay and our fellow citizens will be okay. So I appreciate you, what you've done tonight. I also wanted to comment on, Erin, your, your comment about all the hats that you have to wear, the mental health, being a parent, social workers, and uh, pastors. Um, being a retired school nurse working in the school, that's what I did for many years until they got a mental health worker into the schools. And so it sounds like there's the schools are taking on an awful lot in this area, and it sounds like the police force is taking an awful lot on in this area. And because we're compassionate, caring human beings, and we're we're going to do that anyway. So it might be something to kind of work together on to see how we could sort of um, spread out that need and not to say that you're never going to provide that service because that's just who you are and you're going to do that anyway. But um, uh, thank you for putting this together and those are my comments, thanks. Bobby, that's really nice of you to offer that. And uh, Paul, so Paul Fix has thrown a question in here, which I, I think is really good. It kind of tags on to a little bit of what um, uh, the lead in here was what Bobby just put out there. And I think this is an important thing for us to have as a, as a question here this evening. Uh, and we'll just take a couple more minutes to get it wrapped up here this evening, folks. Uh, Paul's question was, how safe do officers generally feel? And what, if anything, could the community do to create a safer environment for the officers? Now, that's just, it's a really interesting question because I, I think coming into this, you know, we're all thinking about, we want to ensure that the community members are feeling safe um, and, you know, getting uh, good service. So uh, just a little bit of a twist on this, you know, how, uh, what could be done, you know, from the community to, uh, to provide some support? Aaron, you want to offer anything on that? I can try, but I'm also going to throw it out to the other officers. I, I don't need to be the only one speaking, but, <laughs> um, you know, I, I think we are fortunate that I, I think Hardwick is a uh, relatively safe community. And I, I think um, that's not just because of the police department. I think it's because of its, its citizens and, you know, Greensboro the same. I, I don't, I'm not trying to exclude Greensboro by any, any means, but, um, you know, both communities are, are relatively safe. They have very good people in them. I'm very proud to, to be here, um, to represent them and, uh, you know, be part of the community myself as well. Um, so I, I, I think it is, is relatively, you know, safe, obviously. Um, we have had um, use of force. We have had officer-involved shootings um, uh, in Hardwick over the last 20 years. Uh, we have had um, uh, officers that have been uh, purposely struck by, by vehicles. Um, so, you know, there's a lot behind the scenes that the general public doesn't, uh, always see. Um, and, uh, part of that is, is, uh, so that the community does, you know, does feel safe. We're, we're here to handle those, those problems. Um, because sometimes we're the only ones that, that are willing to do it. Um, I don't know that I have an answer. I'm going to put it out to, to any of the other officers that are, that are still in here. Um. Um, as to how they could could feel safer, um, I, I can say that that I am appreciative uh, of we have had um, some younger residents uh, bring in uh, things just to say thank you. Uh, we've had uh, a couple of years ago uh, we had a mother and her children 
uh, bring in some little uh, Christmas gifts uh, for every officer here. Um, just, you know, honestly, Paul, it, it, it's, it's that uh, um, thank you that, uh, you know, will warm the heart of the officer that's working through Christmas, uh, through a birthday, through a holiday. Um, you know, after 18 years, I personally have missed uh, many birthdays, holidays, et cetera. Um, so to know that we are appreciated, um, that simple thank you uh, sometimes goes a long way. Um, and it makes us feel safer because we know there's somebody that, that saw us there, somebody that was watching our back as well. So I, are there any of anyone else, any of the other officers want to comment on any of that? Sergeant. Sorry, I had to unmute. mute. Um, no, I mean, I agree with you. I, I've been doing this a long time and um, we're in an age now of cell phones and videos and recordings. And um, I think our job is inherently more dangerous now due to the amount of drug use and uh, abuses that are going on. And I do appreciate when someone thanks me for, for doing my job. Um, I don't need that and I don't require that, but it does make me feel more like a member of the community. Um, my advice to, to citizens out there, when you see an officer on a car stop or you see an officer doing something uh, in the line of duty, keep, keep an eye on them. Um, everyone seems to want a video to catch us doing something wrong, but you know, how about keeping an eye on us to make sure no one comes up behind us? Um, you know, how about videoing or keeping an eye to document the good that's done? Um, that would be most appreciative. Thank you. Anybody else from the uh, officer's role want to offer anything on this? Okay. Um, I see some other stuff popping up, Sean. I don't know yeah. what else. Okay, so here's here's what we'll do. Um, I'm going to just read back a couple of things here, and then uh, we'll off. We'll have a couple minutes for uh, just maybe some closing comments. So uh, Margaret Lipscomb said, "I'd like to give a, a huge pat on the back to a wellness check that Sergeant Barber did last winter in Greensboro." So there's that. Thank you, Sergeant. You're not asking for it, but you got it. There it is. Sherry has uh, Sherry Corners has indicated it'd be good to if we could uh, you know organize something like this to happen again. We unfortunately did have a schedule overlap with a school meeting that's taking place uh, with the pandemic. There's a lot of Zoom events taking place, and with school planning, there was going to be an update to those individuals with uh, school aged children. So unfortunately, we uh, footprinted that this evening. I don't know about the timing of this. This is something that we can evaluate and uh, you know, figure out our next steps and uh, you know, have this as a collaborative effort is my two cents without getting into too many details. Uh, you know, check back in with Gary up there to Greensboro, the Greensboro folks, and uh, you know, just make sure folks in the community you know, have this opportunity to be informed. The other thing I want everybody to be aware of here is, um, and we'll get the word out about this uh, once, we figure, once I figure out the technology because I'm the one recording the event. I think Hardware Community TV uh, is recording, but we're, we're just gonna have to double check this. The, the end point is this, assuming the technology worked, we're gonna be in a position to rebroadcast this event. So while it's not a live situation, you know, a lot of, the, uh, a lot of folks' questions, concerns, hopefully would uh, you know, be projected and uh, just for the, the good of our uh, relationship of our uh, police department with the communities we work in, this would be important. Okay, so um, let me just see what else we got. Um, just real quickly, it'd be helpful to see members of our police, uh, members of our police force. Um, Stephanie, I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Do you mean uh, in a public setting or uh, I'm not sure what the context is there, but. I, 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 yeah. said it, I said it was very helpful. Oh, excuse me, thank you. I got a really small font there That's because I'm trying team. to run everything on this end. So thank you. It's nice of you to say that. Okay, what we're gonna do, folks, is uh, we're a little bit past our published time, and that's okay. Um, Gary, uh, you know, on behalf of Hardwick, uh, do you have anything that you'd like to offer uh, for the good of the uh, event this evening? No, I think it was very helpful. I think people got their 
questions answered. I, I hope the technology, I did record it. So anyone that missed it with the school meeting, I wasn't sure. aware of that since we're homeschoolers. Yeah. Um, um, hopefully that, that can be replayed for them. And I'd like to thank everyone for participating, all the officers. Okay, and good. Uh, Chief Cochran, it's, uh, you know, you've got on the agenda, you're, you have the opportunity to offer some uh, closing comments. If you'd like to do that, then we can button it up. Sure, I don't, I don't have anything scripted, Sean. Uh, it's off the cuff, but first I, you know, thank, uh, thank everyone uh, that did participate. Um, again, we, we want to be, you know, open and, and uh, many of us are, are part of the community. We want to continue being part of the community and, and we couldn't do the job that we do without uh, help from the community. So, um, you know, this is important. We have done um, other events uh, as I think we have done open houses, we've had a barbecue here, um, you know, so, so these are um, all things that we're trying to do to be part of the community. Um, Halloween has been big for us, uh, for anybody uh, that's in Hardwick on Halloween night. Uh, one of the things I did was bring in a lot of involvement. Um, uh, we actually uh, closed down some of the streets so that it's safer for uh, the children, when they're, you know, trick, trick or treating, we tried to pick the best area uh, that we could, that we could close off without causing huge traffic flows. Um, and, and that has certainly grown over the years to where, you know, people have donated uh, candy to residents in that area because it is a um, somewhat burdensome on, you know, on the residents in that area. But, you know, we did that as a, as a community thing to be part of the, the community. Um, and so, um, yeah, it's grown. The kids see us, um, the parents see us, we interact, uh, with all of them on a, a very positive level. And, um, so, um, you know, I, I certainly would, would, uh, do another zoom. It's a zoom to me is a little intimidating to be on camera, I guess, like this, but, um, I would rather do it in person and hopefully we can uh, get rid of this COVID stuff so that, uh, we could actually meet people in person again. Um, and, uh, I certainly would, would, uh, rather have a, a regular meeting or open house or, or whatever anybody suggested, um, rather than do it, uh, over the, the video, the video just seems impersonable to me. Um, but it's what we have to work for, uh, work with right now. So, um, but Aaron, again, thank you everyone. And, um, uh, again, Aaron, I want to just real quick, Aaron, um, yeah. Yeah, let me just cut in there. Just uh, can you, uh, you know, if folks want to follow up with you on anything, uh, you know, how, how would they get in contact with you? I say, or and or the department. What's your recommendation there? Sure. My email, uh, call me. I have voicemail. Um, so you know, any any of those ways. Um, how do we get that basic information, Aaron? Um, I think we published the email when my email went out. Yeah. Um, uh, however, that can be published. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not the greatest with this technology. So uh, maybe when HCTV can, can, uh, you know, add it on when they televise it or something, I, I don't know. Is it the um, regular dispatch number if somebody wanted to call you and just speak with you? Yeah, it's 472-5475. Okay. Been that, but been that same number for years and years and years. Um, it's a non-emergency line. 911, of course, now is an emergency line. Um, that's a non-emergency line. Um, that that uh, anybody can call in, and again, uh, you know, we're welcome talking with anybody and hearing suggestions, etc. Um, you know, Janet um, um, had had made a uh, you know comment about um, you know feeling intimidated by uniforms and, and guns and stuff, and and we really don't want to intimidate anybody. That's not our job. Um, our job is to um, you know, promote peace and, and keep the peace in the community. So um, I invite Janet down for a cup of coffee and um, hopefully she won't find us, you know, intimidating uh, after, after coffee. Um, but um, I also want to thank um, the dedicated men and women that are, are working for this agency. Um, again, I'm very proud of the, the staff that I have. Uh, they work hard. Uh, many of them have been, with me for many, many years now. Um, and um, I, I really can't stress enough about how uh, dedicated all of them are and have been over the years. And I really appreciate their help uh, making this agency what it is now. Okay, so um, 
what uh, what we're gonna do is um, was there a question there from Janet? No, no, no. Okay, what I what I think we'll do then is uh, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, Chief, so thank. Yeah, I just invited uh, Janet down for coffee. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Aaron, you're my cousin. I know. <laughs> So, uh, She'll drink all your coffee. There you go. So uh, if, if uh, from the town of Hardwick, I can say thank you to uh, the Greensboro leadership and, uh, you know, Greensboro community members uh, had asked to, uh, you know, uh, gear this up. Um, it, it took us getting through some of the summer months with, uh, you know, coming off the pandemic and uh, folks needing some vacation times to uh, recharge a bit. It, it has been busy. I want to just point this out. You know, our, our, in the middle of the pandemic, our police department did not skip a beat in regards to their operations. And I think that's, uh, we had our highway department doing the same. I know it was the same for the Greensboro Highway Department. Uh, the point is this, that it's been, uh, you know, with the pandemic going on, it's been our regular work that all of us have been doing, but then the, uh, just the additional that all of us are having to do has been a lot. That's not a complaint. That's just what it is. So Greensboro community folks are involved here. Gary, thank you. You were working with Chief Cochran to get this rolling and Bobby has, has been touched it, of course, too, some time back. So thank you uh, to the officers that took part this evening. Thank you for your time on this. Doug, thanks for sitting in from the Gazette. And then, uh, Leif, appreciate your involvement very much. Uh, you know, Hardware Community Television is a really uh, good resource for all of us. If at any time any of you have any questions, uh, you know, just about generally what is happening for uh, policing in our communities, uh, do reach out to Chief Cocker. And, you know, he's made himself available, at, you know, as he's indicated. Um, you know, these are members that care very much. The officers I'm referring to now uh, care very much about the community. So, you know, in the middle of what I've already identified at the start of this meeting, we've got two things that are really critical in regards to uh, pandemic and then just the, the social angst, uh, you know, and the issues that are occurring uh, in our country these days. So, you know, if you're not sure about something, get yourself informed and talk to our police, you know, talk with our police, talk to our chief. Um, and then as you're doing now, be involved and, uh, you know, make sure you're informed. And um, I, I appreciate what the officers have said here now. Uh, you know, don't be afraid to talk to the officers and say thank you, uh, assuming you're happy with the services they're providing. I think that goes a long way. So uh, with this being said, uh, Gary, uh, thank you. Uh, Bobby, thank you. Uh, Chief, you uh, and all the officers. And uh, with that, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up this evening. So. Uh, Thank you all very much. Have a good evening.